right. Well, welcome again to today's webinar. My name is Alex. I'm going to be hanging out with you here uh, today. And what we're going to be going over today is Aflos Accounting. So chances are, uh, I mean, since you're here, you've obviously heard of us. You've been to our website. And so you know that Aplos is online nonprofit software. And we actually have a couple of different products that we offer to uh, our nonprofit clients, one of which is accounting. And we also have donations and e-file. So with these products, you can use them independently. Or if you're looking for kind of an all-in-one system for your nonprofit, I really recommend uh, trying a free trial or, or getting in there for all of our products to see how they can benefit your organization. For today, what we're going to take a look at is Aplos Accounting. So what does it do? How do you get started? And then once you actually get into a 15-day free trial, where do you go and kind of how to, na how to, excuse me, how do you navigate the software? Okay. So if you've been to our website, let's take a look here. So Aplos.com, uh, on the homepage, you'll see how kind of uh, we highlight the three different products there. And if you want to narrow down to one of the products, you can click the navigation up at the top. And the nonprofit accounting software page here goes through all of the different features that uh, our accounting software offers. It's also got our pricing breakdown. So it's $15 per month for one user, and it's $25 a month for unlimited users. So two or you know 20, however many you need. And if it looks like something that might be good for you, we do offer a 15-day free trial so that you can jump in there, get your feet wet, put in some information, and see if it's something that will work for your organization. So once you do, click this button, start my 15-day free trial, and once you go past the, uh, the registration page, you're going to land here, which is our dashboard. Now, this is a brand new account. So uh, for all of you who have been into accounting, you have seen this before, and so you know that once you land here, you naturally ask the question of, now what? <laughs> you know, what do I do? Well, uh, one thing that we try to do is uh, make accounting very simple. And uh, all nonprofits need what's called fund accounting software. So what I want to show you today is once you land into this free trial, where do you go? What do you do? How do you navigate the software? So this dashboard here that you land on is kind of a high-level overview of the program and what information has been entered. So you can see your setup status. You've got some recent online donations history here as well as your bank balances, your fund balances, your contacts. And as you begin to have information in the system, this will look uh, different as you actually have some data to look at. And on the left-hand side, you can see the menu to navigate through the software. The first screen here is settings, and then you've got contacts and reports. And settings, contacts, and reports are all kind of the um, global areas of Aplos, as we like to say, which means no matter what product you use in Aplos, you have settings, contacts, and reports. So those always stay there at the top. And then below reports, you actually get into the product-specific areas of Aplos. So you've got Aplos accounting, Aplos donations, donor relations, which is coming soon, and then e-file. And each one of these has a little sub-menu that you can move around in. But let's first take a look at settings. So settings here is where you can set up uh, more or less the settings of your organization. And if you were to click update here, you can change your organization name. So if I wanted to type in like Aplos Accounting here, you can put in your address as well as your EIN number. All of this information is what's going to populate on the header of your reports. So be sure to enter that at some point. Once you do click update, and then I'll change the uh, organization name here in the top right. And then up at the top of the screen, you'll see that you can have, uh, you can navigate through the other kind of sub pages of the settings section. So one of which is users. And users is where you can uh, edit your user profile. So if you need to change your email or password, you can do that here by clicking on your name. So if I wanted to change this to my name here, I can do so. Click update. And then if you wanted to add another user, you can just click this button, put in their first last name, email address, what role permission you want them to have, as well as a password, and then click create. Now, uh, again, keep in mind that in the accounting product, the user uh, account is what kind of dictates your monthly subscription. So if you add a user, you'll automatically bump up to this $25 a month price. Or if you have multiple users and you're looking to click down, excuse me, then just click on a user, click disable, and that will uh, um, narrow you back down to one if you need to. We also have the subscription page here, which is where you can manage your monthly subscription of Aplos. So you can see right now I have accounting uh, for the one user, which means I'm $15 per month. And then you can also kind of toggle these things on and off as you need more functionality. So for instance, if you wanted to try the donations product as well, uh, everybody starts off with kind of the beginning tier of that, which we're gonna look at here in just a couple of minutes. But then if you wanted to try the contributions piece to it as well, you can see some more information about that there. You can just click this guy and that'll move up the, uh, the subscription for you. 
which will adjust your monthly bill so that you have an understanding of what you're being charged uh, if you decide to go with Haplos. All right. So moving down from settings, we have contacts. And contacts is your kind of big people database, um, you know, uh, address book type section. I'm going to come back to this in a little while once we actually have some stuff in here. So you can take a look at uh, what it looks like to have a few names. And then we have reports. So reports, again, once you have your accounting set up and you've got some information in there, will allow you to generate uh, statements on uh, what you want to see about your accounts and your transactions. Okay, uh, we'll come back to this as well. So now that we've kind of covered the uh, the global areas of Aplos, uh, really the first thing you're going to want to do is click on accounting and then go to accounts. So for anybody that is new to accounting or bookkeeping, uh, or even anybody that's been doing it for a while, there are kind of three primary functions to an accounting software. And the first step is to set up a chart of accounts. Now, what does this mean? Uh, that means that you're creating accounts that represent the five different types of uh, areas that accounting tracks, which is the stuff that you own, which is your assets. So anything that you guys own, your liabilities, which is your debt or payables, your equity or your fund balances. So this is where in Applos you would set up your funds up here. And then you have your income, which is the way that you receive money and your expenses, which is the way that you spend money. So setting up these accounts is basically like you saying, I expect to spend money this, that, and the other way. I expect to receive money this way. Uh, the money that's coming in and out is going into these funds of my organization. And so once you have these accounts set up, you can then use the accounts in the second step of any accounting software, which is entering transactions. And a transaction is you just kind of recording what's happened numerically or monetarily in your organization. So did you spend money? Did you receive money? Did you transfer money? Do you owe money? Is money owed to you? All of those are uh, entered as transactions here in Applos. And then the third step to any accounting software, once you have your accounts set up, your transactions entered, means that you can do the third step, which is generate reports. And a report uh, is essentially the answer to a question, right? So people are gonna ask you, or you're gonna need to report, how much money do I have? How much money have I spent? How much money have we received via you know, uh, contributions? How much money do we have set aside for something? Uh, all of those are questions which are answered by reports. And this is where you can generate those reports. So back in the accounts section here, we've got those five different types of accounts, assets, liability, equity, income, and expense. And for any one of these sections, you would just click on it and that will expand the accounts within that section. And you can see that we start you off with some accounts here automatically. Now these can be edited, uh, removed, deleted, changed, whatever you need to do. Uh, a chart of accounts is completely unique to your organization. So uh, if you're just starting out or you know, if you are new to the things of accounting, this process is essential for you. And it is uh, extremely important that you go through it with a, an understanding of your own organization and not try to copy too hard something else that you've seen elsewhere. Because at the end of the day, again, these accounts are what you use in transactions and pull reports on. So if they don't make sense when entering a transaction or pulling a report, then you might not want to create the account. For instance, if you are setting up accounts for your assets, an asset, again, is anything that you own as an organization. So at the most basic level, this is an account for each bank account that you have set up. So checking, savings. This can also be money that is owed to you that you haven't gotten yet, which is called accounts receivable. But then you can also have these things called fixed assets, which are property or items that you own. So, for instance, building or if you owned a car or if you had inventory or something, you can create that as an account. Now, if I don't have any buildings, then it's kind of pointless to have an account called buildings. Wouldn't you agree? So in that case, feel free to click on this, delete it and only use and create the accounts that you need. In fact, you can even create or uh, or delete entire groups. You can see here that within my assets section, I have these different groups, current assets, fixed assets, and then the accounts within them. A group is like a folder on your computer. It just stores other items. So when you look at a report, you can see not only how much have I spent in my checking, savings, and accounts receivable, but you can also subtotal by group. So that, that becomes a little more important when you get into income and expenses because you can group these things kind of per category, you know, so administrative expenses, missions, expenses, other expenses. So you've got the each individual line item, but then you can kind of subtotal by the larger group that it's in. Okay. 
So again, so assets, anything that you guys own. So we start you off with checking savings accounts receivable in that building that I got rid of. So if you have any more assets, what you would do is click this little plus button right here and then enter a number and a name for the account. Now, according to GAAP, which is Generally Accepted Accounting Principles, all asset accounts are typically numbered in the 1,000 range, much like the liabilities are numbered in the 2,000 range, equity is in the 3,000 range, income is in the 4,000 range, expenses in fives. And we already, we already kind of start you with that format. So as long as you kind of keep to it, it'll make sense. Uh, so if you wanted to create another account, again, click that plus button. And I can put in another uh, thing here. So let's say I have a secondary checking. I have another checking account. And then click Add Account. So that will add the account to the list. And within a group, all of the accounts will sort numerically. So you can see that that 1,005 went above my savings account there. And you'll also notice this third column right here that says Register or Accounts Receivable. Now this is you kind of dictating what type of account this is. So while it's an asset, if this is a, an account that you need to track each transaction that's kind of flowed through it, meaning like your bank account, right? You want to have an account set up for your bank account and then record all the transactions that have happened in your bank account. Uh, you would click on this and say use as register. And we're going to take a look at what that register thing means in the transaction section. So I'm just going to update that. So let's move on to liabilities. So liabilities are anything that your organization owes, so any debt. We start you off with a couple of them here called credit card, which is uh, like if you have a, a credit card, that's money that you're spending on credit that you just haven't paid off yet. You, you're kind of accruing this balance on a credit card. And we have this one marked as a register too, because now in Aplos, you can have uh, registers for your credit cards. You can track each uh, transaction that's kind of come across that credit card. Excuse me one second. All right. So we have credit card and then accounts payable and accounts payable is any money that you owe but just haven't paid yet. For instance, if someone um, if someone came out and did work on your property and you now owe them money, so you you know subcontractor or something, the bill or the invoice that they send you is money that they've earned and that you now owe them but you just haven't paid yet. So if you need kind of a, a middleman area to track that, you can use this accounts payable account. Otherwise, you can delete it. And then we have this bank loan. So any long-term liability. So if you have uh, you know, a bank loan or if you have a mortgage or uh, some sort of other uh, debt out there that is kind of a longer term payoff period, you can set up an account to represent that as well. Again, this is completely unique to your organization. So if you don't have a bank loan and you don't have any long-term liabilities, just say goodbye, delete it, and then go from there. All right. So let's move on to uh, equity. So equity is uh, where you have your fund balance accounts. Now, let me tell you a little bit about what a fund is and how you track it in Aplos. A fund in your organization is an area that has its own unique balance, income, debt, expense. It's almost like a little mini organization within your larger nonprofit. Okay. So basically, if you can think about your nonprofit right now and answer the question, I need to know how much money I have set aside for blank. That blank is most likely going to be a fund that you want to set up in Aplos. Because what Aplos allows you to do is set up these funds and then track them side by side within your asset and liability income and expense accounts. So for instance, I can record that I have uh, gained you know, $10,000 of income to my general fund and $3,000 to my missions fund. It all goes into the same checking account, but then you can view your checking account and see it kind of divvied out by what funds you have created, which again, we'll take a look at here in the transaction section. So think back to that question. How much money do I have set aside for blank? That answer to the blank is gonna be a fund. So uh, go ahead and customize these to whatever you want. Oh, and one thing that I forgot to show you here is you're actually able to move accounts into different groups if you need to. There's this little up and down orange arrow thing that if you were to click and drag on that, that'll allow you to move that into a different group. So if you need to consolidate or if you need to create new groups and move stuff around, you can, okay? So I'm gonna go ahead and get rid of this restricted net assets account group. Um, and then I'm gonna create some more account or funds here. So let's say I'm gonna do a missions fund. Create, oops, missions fund. Click add fund. 
that will go ahead and add the uh, account name for you there. It kind of says fund twice, so I'm going to get rid of that. So missions fund balance, I'm going to change this to building fund balance. And I'm, by the way, I'm just kind of I'm clicking on these accounts, changing it, pressing enter, or you can click update to get that uh, updated as well, like so. So once you have the funds that you need, you can also assign them different colors so that when you look at a graph or something, you can kind of easily distinguish between the three. Uh, so let's say my general is going to stay black. Uh, my missions, I want to make a blue kind of color. So let's do that. And I'm just clicking on this fund and then clicking this numeric kind of field looking thing here and dragging this along to a different color, change the contrast, whatever I want, and then click update. So now if I refresh the screen, those funds will show in those different colors. And then in the transactions, I'll show you what that looks like on a graph. Okay, uh, so let's move on to income and expenses. Now, uh, if you guys, again, if you have any questions, please let me know, because I know that assets, liabilities, and funds can be kind of confusing if you're not familiar to accounting. So uh, please ask me questions if you got them. Uh, it's gonna be a lot easier now that we're looking at income and expense, because these are the accounts that you're actually going to use on a daily basis. So income is any way that your organization receives money. Okay, so any way that money's coming in to your organization, income. So we start you with contributions income, so money received through contributions. We have building grant income. We have interest earned. This can be things like uh, revenue. This can be um, you know, another grant that you receive. You can even have accounts created for each specific fund. So if your building fund had unique ways of getting money, you can create an account for that. So it's like, let's say building, Oops, uh, let's say 4,000, uh, let's do this. Let's rearrange these a little bit. I'm gonna call this group building income. And I'll go ahead and change that to the building fund so that now every time I use that income account, it's gonna go into that building fund. I'm gonna move building grant down here. And I'll say this is building income, like so. Let me number this differently here, one, five. Okay, so there's my kind of building income group with my building income accounts there. So let's say I also have a grant income, so 4,005. And that's gonna go into my general fund, add account, there you go. So as you're adding these accounts, you have this choice of what fund you want it to hit. And so your choices will be whatever fund you hit, you have set up or any fund. And basically any fund just means that you can use it for any fund. It's gonna to default to the top of the list, but as you know, kind of a per transaction basis, you can decide where that's gonna go. So if I have contributions income and that can go to any one of my funds, then you can just leave it open. And that way it doesn't automatically choose another fund when you use it. So let's say missions income is another one, another group there. So let's say in here I have uh, revenue. And it's going to go into my missions fund. And then let's do one more. Let's say I have uh, missions and donations. There you go. Okay, so we've got some income accounts set up. So again, any way that your organization receives money, you can kind of group these and organize these however you want using these groups. And then now expenses are any way that you spend money. So. Uh, this is typically going to be the largest bucket of accounts that you're going to have because you spend money a lot of different ways. We start you with salaries, rent, bank fees, and building expense, but you can have stuff like office supplies, food and entertainment, utilities, mortgage, uh, not mortgage, excuse me, uh, we've already got rent on there for you, um, electronics, uh, uh, missions you know, expenses, uh, fundraiser expenses. You can literally create an account for anything that you want, and because this is so broad, I'm just going to leave it how it stands right here. Actually, I'll add one more here. Let's do uh, office expenses because that's pretty common. Coming out of my general fund, click account. Okay, so there are now my expenses. So uh, kind of as a recap, this process of setting up your accounts is like setting up the skeleton for your accounting software. These are the accounts that you're going to use in transactions and eventually see on reports, which are going to uh, answer questions for you there. So also in this account screen, you have tags and you have starting balances. Tags up here is where you can uh, track uh, 1099 tags. So if you need to track what uh, vendors you're paying for 1099s at the end of the year, you can enable that. 
You also have custom tags and 990 tags, which add fields to your transactions so that you can kind of further classify what's happening in the transaction. I'm gonna pause on that here for today, but let me know if you have questions about that. Uh, and then moving on to the starting balances, this is kind of the next portion that you'll wanna do when you're getting set up with Aplos. So once you have your account set up, this starting balances concept is basically the system asking you, okay, great, so when you start using Aplos, how much money do you have? And how much money do you owe? And out of that money, how much is set apart for each one of your funds? So you can see here, each one of my asset and liability accounts are listed, and then my funds are across the top. So let's say in my checking, I have $10,000 as of when I want to start using Aplos. And what I mean by that is uh, the starting balance is going to precede any transaction that you enter in the software. So if you want to start using Aplos as of you know October 1st, then I would suggest going to the bank, finding out what your bank balance was on October 1st, enter that value here, because then every transaction from October and forward is either going to add to or take away from that beginning balance. Okay. So again, let's say I have $10,000 in my checking account. And out of that $10,000, $6,000 of it is in my uh, general fund, $3,000 of it is in building, and then $1,000 in missions. So you can see there, there's my total $10,000. And the system is asking me, great, so out of that 10000 how much is set aside for each one of your funds within that account? Uh, side note, this may be completely necessary, but uh, unnecessary, but uh, we see a lot of customers that have previously set up funds as multiple bank accounts. So you might be used to that, and you might even have multiple bank accounts for each one of your funds, like a missions checking or a building checking. Uh, with Aplos, that's not completely necessary. Uh, because you can track the funds side by side within one account. So you can have one checking account and track individual balances within it. If you have that situation going on, so if you have multiple checking accounts, then uh, either contact us or uh, either just be wary because what's going to happen is you're probably going to be want to, you're going to want to be tempted to create a fund for that as well. So you would need to put the money in the right bank account and the right fund each time. So for instance, if like, for instance, if this said building checking, then my building fund wouldn't be here, it would be here. So it just gets a little, little weird. You know, if you have multiple accounts, that's kind of accomplishing the same thing. But uh, if you have multiple bank accounts and multiple funds set up, it can just kind of get a little confusing. Um, so again, if that applies to you, then let me know. But if not, forget what I just said, <laughs> and we can move on. Um, so go down the list here and enter the starting balances for each one of your asset and liability accounts. And when you're done, click update, and that will save those values to your accounts. So now when we move on from accounts into entering transactions, we are brought to the registers screen, which if you remember, we marked asset and liability accounts as registers. And you can see my starting balance right there. So this screen, just kind of at a high level, from top down, you've got the difference between registers and journal entry. For you uh, accounting type people who like to use debit and credit, or if you have a transaction that needs that, you can use our journal entry screen. But uh, the register is where you're going to record any transaction that has impact on one of your register accounts, which might be one of your bank accounts or credit card if you have that set up. And you can select what account you're working in here. So whatever register account you have set up in accounts is gonna be able to be chosen right here. So let's say I wanna record transactions that are happening in my checking, I would select that. And then you have this kind of sub navigation here, which I'll show you in just a little bit. And then you have a search field, which you don't need to enter anything, that's just to find a transaction. And if you scroll down just a little farther, you'll see the actual entry bar right here. So this entry bar is where you would enter a new transaction that will impact your beginning balance right there. You can see of $10,000. And if I scroll down just a little bit farther, you'll see this fund balances graph, which is showing you out of your balance of $10,000, how much money is set aside for each one of your funds that you decided earlier. So you can see out of 10,000, I have 3,000 in my building fund, 6,000 in general, and 1,000 in missions. All right. So for a new transaction, how would you enter that? What does that look like? Good question. In this entry uh, screen right here, all you need to enter is a date, a payee, an account, and either a payment or a deposit amount. So this entry is asking you how much money and how did you spend this money, or what income are you receiving and how did you receive the income? 
So check number is not necessary. You can leave that blank. You can enter the date. So let's say on uh, uh, you know 10 uh, 2, I had a transaction, and let's say I went to uh, Best Buy and I bought some uh, office supplies. Okay. The payee is like the source or the destination of the money. So if you went to a store, that would be the payee. If you paid someone, they would be the payee. So either the source or the destination of the money. So there's Best Buy. So now what I'm doing is selecting an account. So here is where your income and expense accounts come into play. You're going to scroll down here. And if you're recording a payment amount, so money that you're spending, it's going to be one of your expense accounts. Or if it's a deposit money coming in, it's going to be one of your income accounts. So let's choose office expenses there. I can choose what fund this is coming out of. So my general fund. And let's say I bought a computer. And there's going to be a payment amount of $1,000. Okay. So again, once you have a date, a payee, an account, and a payment or a deposit amount, all you do is click out of here, press tab, or click enter. And that's going to save the transaction. So you can see that right there. It's going to adjust your balance. And you can see that my fund balance went down as well. My general fund used to be 6000 but now it's 5000 because I spent it out of that fund with that expense account. And you would do the same thing for income. So if you got a grant, uh, so let's say we got a uh, state of California because that's where we are. And they gave us a grant. So let's do grant income into my missions fund. And let's say, uh, I don't have a comment in my mind. So let's just say we got a deposit of uh, $4,000. Okay. So you'd record that. So there's that 4,000 that increased my balance from nine to 13. And you can see that my missions fund is now significantly increased by that income. So this becomes important for the fund accounting. So uh, if you have a checking account and you're wanting to know how much money is set aside for blank, that's what our system allows you to do. So now when you go to the bank, you don't have to wonder if I pull out, you know, if I spend a hundred dollars, am I spending the grants money that I shouldn't? Or do I actually have money in my general purpose to spend right now? That's a fund accounting question that we can help you answer. So that's your register. Uh, before we jump into kind of the other tabs here, I want to show you the advanced settings. And advanced settings is where you can turn on or off additional functionality to Aplos accounting. Uh, this is all free. This is just depending on your needs. So uh, um, if you don't need accounts payable and receivable, then don't worry about it. But if you do need this stuff, just click show and that will then make it available in its section. And really, all of these become available in the transaction section with the exception of budgeting, which becomes available in the accounts section. So if accounts, now I have budgeting up here, which is where you can set values for your income and your expense accounts. So that way when you record transactions, you can run reports to see how you're doing compared to your budget. And then in transactions now, we have a couple of more options. So up at the top, we have accounts payable, where you can enter bills that you owe but haven't paid yet. Accounts receivable, where you can draft an invoice to send to somebody, which is income that you've earned but haven't received from them yet. It's kind of a middleman for that. And then in the registers, you now have bank integration, bank reconciliation, and check printing. Check printing allows you to print checks for any of the payments or accounts payable that you have entered in the system. And then bank integration is where you would link your bank with Aplos. Uh, this is uh, merely a, a time-saving tool. So this is not necessary. You can go through the register and enter transactions manually like I have been doing to keep all of your books up to date. But if you have a lot of transactions or if you just uh, you know want to save yourself some time, I would recommend uh, doing this process. And what you would do is uh, enter the name of your bank. So let's say Bank of, uh, you know, bank of the West and click search. That will then bring up a list of all of the like titled banks. So you would pick which one uh, you have and then click log in. That will ask you for your bank credentials. And so once it's added, you basically say, I want my Bank of the West checking to be linked to my Aplos checking and then retrieve transactions. And that will build or excuse me, that will pull a list from your bank of all the transactions that have hit your account within a certain period of time. You would then go through those transactions and assign them an either an income or an expense account, and then click import, and then that will import them into your check register or register account here. So again, it's kind of a time-saving tool. It's not necessary, but if you want it, it's there. Bank reconciliation is a, a process that you go through that basically ensures that your bank statement and your Aplos account are accurate when compared with one another. 
Uh, this is a helpful process to go through maybe on a monthly basis to reconcile your, your month's worth of transactions. Uh, and we are doing webinars that are dedicated to bank reconciliation as well as integration. So if you have any questions, let me know. But otherwise, I'll keep you posted on when we do those webinars to kind of show you that process. Uh, but for now, we'll, we'll pause on it. But again, if you have any questions, let me know. All right. So that is uh, accounts and transactions. So lastly, let's take a look at that kind of final third step here of reports. And in reports now, now that we have accounts set up and we have a couple of transactions entered, this is actually going to show us some information. So each one of these report kind of quadrants here is a different type of report that you can click on, or you can click on a shortcut here uh, for a different type of report. So a budget to actual or income statement by month type thing. Uh, but if you click on one of these reports, it'll show you the type of information that the report shows. So this is my balance sheet which shows my assets equaling my liabilities plus my equity, which means I have $13,000 and it's split up among my funds like so. So you can see that they are in balance, hence the balance sheet. And any of these reports can be customized with a date or account range up here at the top, as well as custom fields, or excuse me, a custom uh, columns here. So if I were to click this little orange plus button, I can add a column. So like if you wanted to see a balance sheet per fund, you can do that, so there you go. You can also add your logo. And then on the very right here is uh, another uh, report modifiers menu. So you can add some more information. You can customize it however you'd like. And then either save it as a draft, not save it to your computer, but just save the template. So let's say uh, my balance sheet. And I would click save. So what that does is it saves all of these parameters that I added to the report. So I don't need to build this every time. I can just click on my saved report and it'll give it to me. Uh, you can also export this to either XLSX, XLS, or CSV, which are just different file formats for Excel or different uh, data readers that you might have, or you can print this report using this button right there. You can also see the income statement. So again, you can customize it with date and account and a logo and columns and report modifiers. So all of these reports can be very heavily customized to see the information that you want. Um, and keep in mind that uh, as we continue to develop Aplos, uh, the reports section is kind of an endless black hole of uh, feature requests and uh, needs for each nonprofit. What we've tried to do is uh, keep it very high level and very general to all nonprofits and make it simple, because um, that's what Aplos stands for. It actually means simple in Greek. So what we want to do is make this universally effective. So if you have a unique report where you're used to seeing you know, this, that, and the other thing, and that's not available here, uh, please let us know that, and we can put that onto our development list as a future possibility of addition to the reports section. But uh, quite honestly, each nonprofit is different, so each one of you is gonna have a different reporting need than the other, but we've got kind of your bigger bucket uh, type reports here that you can customize. Hopefully they will be able to give you the information you're looking for, but if not, let us know, and uh, we can go from there. All right. All right, so that is a extremely high level uh, view of the accounting product from Aplos. Again, when you register, the first thing you're gonna wanna do is set up your accounts. Then once you have your accounts set up, you're gonna wanna enter transactions on a daily basis, and then you're gonna wanna generate reports on that information, and that is essentially what an accounting software is. Now with that comes other bells and whistles like budgeting, accounts payable, receivable, bank reconciliations, all that kind of stuff. But the uh, no, excuse me, the nuts and bolts of the accounting are the accounts, transactions, and reports. Now, with Aplos Accounting, you've got that whole product there. We also have some free uh, features that you can use in the other products as well. For instance, eFile. So eFile uh, again can be its own separate software if you need it. But uh, everybody has access to eFile uh, for the most part. So even if you have accounting, you've got eFile. So we are IRS e-file providers for the Form 990 series, and we have specifically the 990N form and the 990EZ. The 990N is for any nonprofit that has less than $50,000 in gross receipts during the year, and this form is uh, free for the current year. Uh, otherwise, it's $20 for any prior year return, and this literally takes three to five minutes. It's basically asking, did you receive less than $50,000? What's your address? What's your name? And did you go out of business? And that's basically the form. The form 990EZ is the, kind of the middle form. So anybody that's over 50, but less than 200,000 in gross receipts. Now this is uh, the primary form that our customers need to file. 
and that is $40 per return. And we can do the current year 2013 or the prior year 2012 as well. Uh, the last form here, the full form 990, we don't currently have an e-file option for yet, but that is something that we do hope to have down the road. Uh, but if you need to file the easier, the e-postcard, go for it. That's part of your accounting software. Uh, last free addition here is every product in Aplos has free use of donations uh, online forms. What does this mean? Okay, so uh, donations, we have a whole webinar that kind of is dedicated to the donations product. So if you're curious about that, let me know and I can send you the link or give you some more information on it. I won't spend a ton of time on it today, but just know that you're an accounting customer. You have access to purposes and online forms, which basically means that you can set up an online uh, donations profile with us and WePay, who we've partnered with to provide this service, which means you can... Uh, create customized forms that you can then put onto your website or send out via email and begin to receive online donations into your account. You can also choose to link those with your accounting. So if you want every time that a, you know a, an online donation comes in, if you want that to increase your bank account, you can. Otherwise, you can have a completely separate donation record and accounting record, and then just make sure that the two are in sync at some point. Okay. All right, so that is Apple's accounting with free features from donations and e-file. Uh, so what I'd like to do now is open it up for some question and answer time. I see a couple of questions have already come in. Uh, so I'm going to pause myself for a couple of minutes and see what comes through. And uh, once we're done here today, I'm gonna send you all an email just uh, to touch bases and say thank you for showing up. So if you have any follow-up questions that we didn't get answered here today, let me know and uh, we'd be happy to walk through anything with you.